to Jesus Christ. Today is Thursday, March 16th, the 18th day of the fast, uh, and this will bring to a close our initial homily that we've read from St. Cyril of Jerusalem on the 10 points of doctrine. Uh, and the last point that he will have in this homily, uh, which we'll hear today, is on the divine scriptures. Uh, so let's hear from St. Cyril about the scriptures. Now, these, the divinely inspired scriptures of both the Old and the New Testament, teach us, for the God of the two testaments is one, who in the Old Testament foretold the Christ who appeared in the New, who by the law and the prophets led us to Christ's school. For before faith came, we were kept in ward under the law, and the law has been our tutor to bring us unto Christ, from Galatians 3.24. If you ever hear any of the heretics speaking evil of the law or the prophets, answer in the sound of the Savior's voice, saying, Jesus came not to destroy the law, but to fulfill it, from Matthew 5.17. Learn also diligently, and from the church, what are the books of the Old Testament, and what those of the New. I implore you, read none of the apocryphal writings, for why, you, why do you, who does not know those which are acknowledged among all, trouble yourself in vain about those which are disputed? Read the divine scriptures, the 22 books of the Old Testament, these that have been translated by the 72 interpreters. For after the death of Alexander, the king of the Macedonians, and the division of his kingdom into four principalities, into Babylonia, Macedonia, Asia, and Egypt, one of those who reigned over Egypt, Ptolemy Philadelphus, being a king very fond of learning, while collecting the books that were in every place, heard from Demetrius Valerios, the curator of his library, of the divine scriptures of the law and the prophets, and judged it much nobler, not to get the books from the possessors by force against their will, but rather to propitiate them by gifts and friendship, and knowing that what is extorted is often adulterated, being given unwillingly, while that which is willingly supplied is freely given with all sincerity. He sent to Eliezer, who was then high priest, a great many gifts for the temple here at Jerusalem, and caused him to send him six interpreters from each of the twelve tribes of Israel for the translation. Then, further to make experiment whether the books were divine or not, he took precaution that those who had been sent should not combine among themselves by assigning to each of the interpreters who had come his separate, in, who had come his separate chamber in the island of Pharos which lies over against Alexandria, and committed to each the whole scriptures to translate. When they had fulfilled the task in seventy-two days, he brought together all their translations, which they had made in different chambers, without sending them one to another, and found that they agreed not only in the sense, but even in words. For the process was no wordcraft, nor contrivance of human devices, but the translation of the divine scriptures spoken by the Holy Spirit was of the Holy Spirit accomplished. Of these read the two and twenty books, but have nothing to do with the apocryphal writings. Study earnestly these only which we read openly in the church. Far wiser and more pious than yourself were the apostles and the bishops of old time, the presidents of the church who handed down these books. Being therefore a child of the church, do not transgress upon its statutes. Of the Old Testament, as we have said, study the two and twenty books, which, if you are desirous of learning, strive to remember by name, as I recite them. For of the law, the books of Moses are the first five, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Next, Joshua, the son of Nun, and the book of Judges, including Ruth, counted as seventh. Of the other historical books, the first and second books of the kings are among the Hebrews, one book. Also the third and fourth, one book. In like manner, 
The first and second of Chronicles are with them one book, and the first and second of Ezra are counted one. Esther is the twelfth book, and these are the historical writings. But those which are written in verses are five, Job and the book of Psalms and Proverbs and Ecclesiastes and the Song of Songs, which is the seventeenth book. And after these come the five prophetic books, one book of the twelve prophets, one of Isaiah, one of Jeremiah, including Baruch, and Lamentations, and the Epistle, then Ezekiel, and the book of Daniel, the twenty-second of the Old Testament. Then, of the New Testament, there are the four Gospels only, for the rest have false titles and are mischievous. The Manichaeans also wrote a gospel according to Thomas, which, being tinctured with the fragrance of the evangelic title, corrupts the souls of the simple sort. Receive also the Acts of the Twelve Apostles, and in addition to these, the seven Catholic epistles of James, Peter, John, and Jude, and as a seal upon them all, and the last work of the disciples, the fourteen epistles of Paul. But let all the rest be put aside in a secondary rank. Whatever books are not read in churches, these read not even by yourself, as you have heard me say. So much for these subjects. Shun every diabolical operation, and believe not the apostate serpent, whose transformation from a good nature was of his own free choice, who can over-persuade the willing, but can compel no one. Also, give no notice neither to observations of the stars, nor auguries, nor omens, nor to the fabulous divinations of the Greeks, witchcraft and enchantment, and the wicked practices of neochromancy, admit not even to a hearing. From every kind of intemperance stand aloof, giving yourself neither to gluttony nor licentiousness, rising superior to all covetous covetousness and usury. Neither venture to heathen assemblies for public spectacles, nor ever use amulets in sickness. Shun also all the vulgarity of tavern haunting. Fall not away either into the sect of the Samaritans or into Judaism, for from now Jesus Christ has ransomed you. Stand aloof from all observance of Sabbaths and from calling any indifferent meats common or unclean but especially abhor all the assemblies of wicked heretics, and in every way make your own soul safe by fastings, prayers, almsgivings, and reading the oracles of God, that having lived the rest of your life in the flesh, in soberness and godly doctrine, you may enjoy the one salvation which flows from baptism, and so enrolled in the armies of heaven by God and the Father, may also be deemed worthy of the heavenly crowns in Christ Jesus our Lord, to whom be the glory unto ages of ages. Amen. And that completes our first homily from St. Cyril. Uh, I'll just make one note, uh, my own personal note about it, and that is that in his time, there were so many things happening uh, that were, as he would say, heretical, uh, and that were leading people astray from the church. And he's very strong on that, to be careful of that, and to stay on that, that narrow path of Christ in his church. Uh, so uh, thanks be to God for these words from St. Cyril, and we'll begin a new homily by him tomorrow. Glory to Jesus Christ.